السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My name is Hassanayn Abdullah I'm from Oukov, uh, South Africa I greet to you in the universal greetings of peace Jazakallah to all of our attendees for attending the session We're very excited, we've got a very interactive and a jam-packed uh, lineup for you uh, this evening um, so I'm just going to take you through uh, uh, an overview of the program. So Alhamdulillah, this is the uh, Zoom webinar. All attendees uh, are on video and audio mute. Uh, feel free to interact um, with us during the course of the program. You'll see there's a little tab for Q&A. So feel free to um, pose your questions through to either Uncle Zainul Kaji or through Hafid um, uh, Muhammad uh, during the course of the program. And we're also live streaming via Facebook. So if you miss out on anything, you can go back to OCAF's fan page uh, in terms of a, a, a uh, reference, inshallah. So without further delay, I'm going to be calling on OCAF yesterday's um, uh, CEO, um, Uncle Zainul Abidin Kaji. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a very warm welcome to everyone out there, uh, all the attendees and especially uh, brother Hafiz Muhammad Hobe and our uh, beloved brother um, Fahim Jackson. I, and I think that uh, uh, thank you Hassanayn for that uh, introduction as well. Uh, basically, I want to just very briefly tell you uh, when we talk about uh, Islamic culture, we talk about uh, Islamic art and heritage, uh, we can't look at it uh, purely in a silo, we can't look at it as isolated from the broader Islamic um, ethos and culture. So we, we, we must understand that Islam is uh, holistic, uh, that we, we talk about Islam as uh, you know, having components of an inter interrelating to social, social, economic, spiritual, physical, uh, cultural, and aesthetic. Okay, so I mean, this you'll see represented not only in our buildings, in our mosques, uh, which are our symbols and our uh, symbols of our identity. Uh, these are structures that have been developed. Uh, so that we understand as people and as uh, as a community, as an ummah, uh, and, and this actually gives us our identity as Muslim. So we are very proud to have the Association of Calligraphers of South Africa and very happy to have this initiative uh, of, of uh, you know, promoting calligraphy in particular because calligraphy uh, as an art form has been part of our Islamic heritage uh, for centuries. Uh, and you can see it from some of the visuals here that uh, we are very, very um, committed to promoting this particular form of art uh, in South Africa and all over the world, inshallah. Uh, we're very happy to have Brother Muhammad Hobe and we had, uh, we, of course, we've been running uh, calligraphy causes with uh, Fahim, uh, Fahim Jackson, Fahim, uh, for Rafiq Kaji, uh, and we've been teaching children, uh, you know, in, in this particular camp as well, we had uh, Rafiq teaching calligraphy and uh, you know, maybe some basic calligraphy as well. Uh, calligraphy is part of our, uh, you know, the, the, the most beautiful writings of Quran can, can be seen in many masajid, in many buildings, uh, in many homes. We, we pride and adorn our homes uh, with, with uh, beautiful calligraphy and beautiful uh, ways of expressing uh, Quranic verses and so forth. Uh, and we see this everywhere. So uh, some of the projects that OCAF South Africa has been involved with and as part of our legacy and it's part of our heritage and and september being heritage month in particular uh, it's good that we are actually promoting this particular cause uh, so you can see some of the books that we've been publishing uh, 
uh, is also part of our heritage and part of our historical uh, writing of our history uh, here in South Africa, the origins of Muslims here in South Africa, uh, and, and the struggles that we've actually been through. Uh, so this particular book that you see on the screen there uh, from the Spice Islands is about uh, the, the life and times of Tuan Guru, one of our great leaders of uh, South Africa. Uh, and, and we need to remind ourselves all the time of the, the people that have made these kind of major contributions to the growth and development of Islam uh, in our country. And I hope, inshallah, that uh, with all these other projects of leadership development, calligraphy, uh, the, the promotion and production of uh, literature, uh, the, the promotion of uh, uh, youth development and leadership and martial arts. And hopefully in the future, we, we could have much more on Islamic art and culture, particularly the, the Islamic pottery, ceramics, uh, carpet weaving, uh, and many other art forms, metalwork. Uh, this has been like the, the hallmark of, of uh, Islamic art and architecture in, in many parts of the world. So uh, without much ado, I will hand over back to Hassanein and just to thank everyone to, uh, who, have, who are participating in this webinar. A very warm welcome to you again, and hopefully you will really enjoy this particular session. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right. So uh, inshallah, um, Brother Faim uh, will be joining us uh, later on. Um, but it's just time now uh, for me to introduce um, Hafid Muhammad Wabi. He's one of South Africa's uh, national treasures. And I'm going to play this video, inshallah. And we'll give, uh, you know, if, if you haven't come across um, Hafid's work, this video will be some way of uh, introduction. So we'll play this video, inshallah. And then thereafter, we will have Hafid to come on to give us a, a talk in terms of his journey. Um, and, and he's currently in, in, in Turkey, inshallah. So it'll be a, a 15 to 20 minute talk, and then he'll give us a, a uh, demo, inshallah. So feel free to pose your questions via the Q&A. So I was born in the Eastern Cape, now Transkei. It's a village close to Cape Town. Where I grew up, we, was, we lived in a shacks. Black people were restricted to townships and we could only attend schools with the black communities. Our education was very poor. When I look back today, it's not a good life. You know, we have our toilet facilities outside. We never used to have running water. For the whole for the whole street, we use one tap, you know, to get our water. We used to see the white soldiers driving through the townships. Sometimes we used to go out of the house and wave to them. When they smile at us, we used to feel very happy. Sometimes they used to point a gun at us. I remember a few times, which used to really scare us, but was just one of those things. My father used to work in a furniture shop as a driver. Those days, black people couldn't get uh, good jobs or professions. How it was in most black communities in South Africa. In 91, he chose to become a Muslim. No, he didn't tell us, he just took us one Thursday and put us in a kumbi and we all went to a mosque. Where they changed our names, we became Muslim. He says nobody told him about Islam. It's just something which came from within. So I guess maybe it was Allah's way of giving Hidayah. In 92, he decided to send us to my dresser. I finished my hips in high school. 
So one of my teachers said we should do Arabic. So on Fridays we used to have khutbah lessons. It is like we he used to give us the Riyadh Salihin. We copy the notes and we memorize the khutbah, the hadiths and the ayat and we read it back to him. So on my first lesson, he saw my handwriting, said you have a very good hand. He called me to his office after the lessons and gave me the first pen, a kamish, ink and some notes and said I should just write alifs and bars and that's how I started. I carried on like that maybe for about five years or so and then after a while he made me, I was like the calligrapher of the institute. Whenever visitors came he used to call me and say no we have our own calligrapher here. And then in 2008, I think, Hilal Kazan, one of Hassan Chelebi's students, came to South Africa. She's also a calligrapher, so they called me and said, no, we also have our calligrapher. And I brought my khutbah books and my writings. And she said, no, he's got a good hand, but he needs a teacher. So when she came back to Istanbul, she spoke to Hassan Hoja and said, as a young man, he's a Hafiz also, and he would like to be a student. And he wasn't taking students at that time, but he said, since it's a half years, I will make an exception and let's see how it goes. Came 2009 for four months, just to try if I could do it or not. And then they said I had a good hand, but you cannot become calligrapher in four months or one year. When I started, I really loved it and enjoyed it. And I wanted to be one of the best, not just in South Africa, but after coming to Istanbul, I realized that I wanted to stay more than one year. I used to spend many hours, sometimes until after Fajr. It used to be sometimes 10 hours, sometimes more. There's a lot of people who do two, three, four years and they think they are the best. They think they are, they are finished. You know, they think they are all there. But calligraphy takes a long time. You know, it's a lifetime journey. That's why we are still here. Hassan Hoja, I look at him like a father or maybe a grandfather. Very understanding. I always look for the best in my work. He doesn't look at the bad and he has to encourage me. This is the collection. This was very old. I think I did this three years ago. This is Muhakkak Bismillah. People think I'm a master you know, in South Africa, but <laughs> I need another 15 years. It's been a long journey and a lot of difficulties and obstacles, but alhamdulillah, I'm happy. That was by way of uh, introduction. That was a brief video on uh, Hafid Muhammad. And Hafid Muhammad developed his deep interest for calligraphy in 2000 while studying at his boarding school. And in 2009, he went to Turkey where he got his ijaza in the Tuluth and the Nakshkar. So without further delay, we'd like to call on Hafid Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Azakala for the invitation. I feel very honored to be invited by Okaf, yourself and Brother Zainuddin Abidin and Brother Fahim. Thank you so much for considering doing this webinar with me. So since you've seen the video already, so I don't think I'll go so much into details about uh, my journey on this. I just want to talk about maybe the basics on, on how becoming a calligrapher. So most of us, including myself, I used to think calligraphy is just taking a pen 
and writing anything you can, you know, just making compositions. And But it's a long process. And we need a teacher. It's a very long journey where we need the guidance of a teacher. So I started in 2001, as we said in a video, in Mia's farm and with Molana Ibrahim Mia, who was not a calligrapher, but he had a passion for calligraphy. So he helped me, he used to give me materials which were provided by, by Irsika, and I used to just copy from those books. But after a few years, I realized that I wasn't really progressing. There was something missing from my work. And this is when he told me that I needed a proper teacher who's been trained the traditional way. That is how I came to Istanbul. So with calligraphy, it is very difficult to do it on your own. We all need the guidance of a proper trained calligrapher from the, in the traditional way. So I would just like to say, just to talk a bit about how, we, how the process is of becoming a calligrapher. First of all, we need to find a teacher who's trained properly. For example, as myself, I found Hassan Chelebi. And then after finding a teacher, one has to, uh, to obey the teacher, have to be disciplined and not rush into going into writing uh, compositions. And we should not have more than one teacher. We should just stick with one teacher and follow his way. And however he wants us to write, we should just carry on and develop with the years and have patience. Because most of us, we think, you know, we just, after a few months, then we think we can also start doing the works which have been done, which are being done by the great masters, but that is not the way. We have to follow the syllabus. So firstly, we have the Shoki Afendi book. Now, first of all, we have tools in calligraphy, you know. For example, this is the Kamish which we are using. It is a reed pen from Iran, and sometimes we use a bamboo pen. And this is a knife we use to sharpen our pens with, and we also need proper paper. Because without the proper material, it's very difficult uh, becoming a, a calligrapher. So with the papers and the materials provided, then we need the proper guidance of a teacher. So after finding a teacher, he will start you off with Rabbi Yassir. Some people could write that for one month, maybe six months. My teacher wrote it for two years. And you have to show your lesson maybe twice or three times a week in Istanbul because some of us are doing calligraphy full time. And then you do not go forward without the approval of the teacher. So he will see the Rabbi Yassir if he thinks that it is good enough. And then I will show you some examples. So this is known as a Shoki Afendi book. I think most of us know what this book is. And then there are examples from Rabbi Yassir. This is Rabbi Yassir lesson. I think we had some slides there. Rabbi Yassir. This is a prayer. So while you are practicing this, at the same time, it's a dua for you that Allah should help you, make it easy for you, and that you should finish it with ease and khayr. Then when the teacher is satisfied with this, he will start you off with the alphabets, alif, ba, ta, jin, until the end of it. And that's also another process which could take you one month or two months, depending on your ability or your dedication. So after those, then we have to go to joining the letters. Uh, maybe Ba Alif, Ba Jim, Ba Dal, then all the letters we have to do, the joining, maybe all the alphabets, the Fa Alif, Jim Alif, Sin Alif, Sword Alif, until the end, then we start with the phrases. And then when you have done the phrases, the teacher, some of us, we, start doing composition from that stage, but the teacher does not allow that. And he feels as if we are maybe disrespecting him. 
because before going into the compositions, you want you, your hand to be well developed and ready for the next level. So only you, you can only start doing compositions after finishing the phrases. And thereafter, maybe he will tell you it's time for your each other. And he will tell you maybe to start uh, pre preparing an each other piece, which we have to copy from. Maybe you have to take a composition which was uh, done by one of the masters of the past. You have to write that a few times, maybe take it to your teacher once a week. You would correct it and maybe after writing it four times or six times or 10 times or 20 times, when he feels satisfied that, is, that the piece is up to standard, he will say no, this is unique. And you will have maybe a ceremony to say no, Muhammad or so, so has uh, qualified, is now qualified to be a, a calligrapher and he can sign his name and he can have, he can have students and he can also start uh, composing pieces. So he does that is just the beginning of a calligrapher. Just to say that he can also now take on teach, he can also take on students and that he can also start composing his own works. So the reason for each other, many people would ask, why do we need an each other? So each other is a traditional form, which means it's a chain. It's a chain from the old masters maybe from Hazrat Ali, Sheikh Hamdullah, it's a, it is a link which links you to the old masters of the past, which also qualifies you and maybe qualifies you and maybe gives you pride that you are part of the chain. And that you can also start having your own students and you can sign your works. We are not allowed to sign our works before getting our each other. So each other is a diploma in many, in other words. And then I would also, after your each other, I would also tell you the process of uh, composing, making a calligraphy composition. So firstly, when you are doing a composition, you have to use your imagination. Maybe you think about the piece which you want to do. And then maybe you take a pencil and a piece of paper and then you scribble on it and write a few times maybe for example let's say you want to write la ghaliba illa allah you first have to think about the composition and then you do a few pieces maybe a few tries on a few uh, on a piece of paper and then the final piece when you think you are happy with it then you take a calligraphy paper and a pen and you start writing it and then that is how you make your sketch. So I think if it's possible, I would like to show you some, some sketches of how, how, how the process is and how I make my sketches. Uh, uh, to all attendees, feel free to pose your questions. We are currently streaming live on Facebook and we do have some questions coming in. So this is your opportunity. Alhamdulillah, we've got lots of attendees that have registered. Lots of them have been uh, practicing or attending calligraphy classes. Uh, we've got attendees from Johannesburg, Cape Town, as well as uh, KwaZulu Natal. So if you are a student or you're a calligraphy enthusiast, this is your opportunity to pose your questions to Hafid Hobi, inshallah. Okay. So this is another, can you see? Yes, I think can you, you can see and can you hear us? Loud. Yes, loud and clear. Bismillah. Okay, so this is also a new script which I'm learning. It's called Nastalik or Talik. So this is just to show what I spoke about before that I started from the alphabets. Now this is Ba Alif, Ba Ba. And then once a week I go show this to my teacher. And then these are the corrections below. You can see. These are the corrections of the teacher. And when he feels that this is good enough, he would take me to the next lesson. For example, I had to write this two times. I did this maybe in a period of about three weeks. And then when it was satisfactory to him, I go on to the next section, Jim, Alif, Jim, Jim, Jim. And these are the corrections of the teacher below. And that is how it goes. I also had to write this for about three weeks or four weeks. And from there, go to Sin Alif, 
And when I finish this, then maybe I will start doing the phrases where I start maybe writing a hadith or the ayat of the Quran. And then, inshallah, when this is finished, I will be ready for the hijazat. So this was just part of the process of being a student. So these are a few sketches which I have worked on before. For example, this is wa ufawid wa amri ilallah. I first did this with a pencil in a very small handwriting. And then I did it with a calligraphy pen, also small. And then when I felt that it was good enough, we, I, photo, I, I blew it up with a photocopy machine to the size which I wanted to be. And then I wrote it using the stencil and I made the necessary changes using the, a few stencils. And the final piece was a bit different from this. This is another composition which I'm still working on, Sayyid al-Qawm Khadimuhum. So this is also a sketch. I'm not finished with it. And maybe after two months or so, I will decide on whether I want to write it or not. There are still many changes which need to be done to this. And then this is a later space which I'm working on. La ghaliba illa Allah. I first wrote it very small. I think it's about how many? I did it very small and I, I it is the way according to how I wanted it to be. Then after doing this size, I made it bigger. This is about 70, 60, 61 centimeters, the length of it. I photocopied this. We blew it up with a photocopying machine. And then I traced, this is my, the, the, the final paper which I'm using for it. So I traced it with a pencil, the outlining. I, I outlined it from the, from the photocopy, and now I, I am going to write it. I'm going to show it how, it's, how it is to be written. This is a, a hard paper. I think most calligraphers would know what that is especially prepared paper made from the egg white and, and alum, which is specifically for calligraphy. We cannot just use any paper. So I did the first part of it. And now I'm just going to complete the rest of it. And then I will show you the finished piece as well. And we should write very slowly without rushing. But we come to this stage after many years of practice. When I, I used to be in South Africa, I used to think I was a very good calligrapher because I didn't have a teacher. And in my dress, I used to do the Quran covers for the kitabs of Mia's farm, the publications of Mia's farm. Only after I came to Istanbul, my teacher told me that I had to forget everything which I had known before and start all over. And told me just to do what was uh, in the syllabus and not to think about compositions, which I would be able to do many years after that.
Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam, so, Brother Fahim. Bismillah. Feel free to join in. Okay. <laughs> this form of writing is known as jelly fuluf. There is fuluf which is used with a very small pen, maybe three, two and a half uh, millimeters. Jelly fuluf is anything bigger than three millimeters. So this is known as jelly fuluf. Because these are the writings which I use for massage or maybe for decorations at homes. Hafiz Muhammad, assalamu alaikum. Uh, sorry that I'm, I'm late. I just had some technical issues, but um, there, there are some good questions coming in, and perhaps while you are working, um, I could maybe relate some of the questions to you. Um, okay. One of the questions uh, which has come through, uh, it says, what is or has been the most challenging letter in the Arabic alphabet uh, for yourself to write? For me, all the letters are still very challenging. Sometimes I would say maybe a gene, sometimes it would be a scene, but I find all of them challenging. And the only way to overcome those is by practice. You know, my teacher, I always say this, he says you have to work maybe 30 hours per day. You know, we all know in a day there's only 24 hours. So it's just emphasizing on how many, how much work we have to do. Yes, yes. Definitely. So after, if you practice every day, then I think you'll find all the letters to be fairly easy. Inshallah. And that's why also the, the importance of doing that dua Rabbi Yassir wa la Asir in the beginning of your journey. Yes. I think that is so important to, uh, to, to, to spiritually connect your, what, you, what you're doing um, with, with that dua, especially with the teacher. Um, and the, the teacher is the one that's going to make dua for you that you that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts what you are doing and become and it becomes easier as time goes on. Uh, but yeah. like you say, you, you, you are regarded as a master here in South Africa. Um, and still you, you, you still say that you're still struggling with certain letters. <laughs> it's, I think it's almost impossible for people to understand that. Um, okay, there's another question. How do we pursue calligraphy as a hobby uh, and where can we access the teacher? Inshallah, after, um, after, this, after the session, we will answer all the questions uh, relating to that, but we, um, we, we will, inshallah, open up avenues uh, and hopefully uh, Brother Muhammad uh, uh, Hobi can also um, explain to us if he would be um, interested in accepting new students, inshallah, especially from this part of the world here in South Africa. We, so many people are excited to, to see you now and also learn from you in the future. Inshallah. And the other thing is calligraphy, we do not take it as a hobby. It's something which has to be take as ver taken very seriously. Because what, once we do it as a hobby, then we wouldn't take it so seriously. It's something which needs all your time. So, for you to become a calligrapher, first we have to take it uh, not as a hobby, but something is very serious. You know, just as how you learn your Quran, step by step, that is how we, we learn calligraphy as well. Uh, would you say, uh, Hafid Muhammad, is, is that because um, the Arabic calligraphy is, is actually connected to the Quran? So what you eventually going to be writing will be words of the Quran. Uh, and that demands your your your, your attention. Is is that yes. the reason why why you say that? Yes, and also to become a good calligrapher, you shouldn't take it as a hobby. Okay, I I think this this there are so many artists in South Africa who who uh, would like to pursue calligraphy as as a hobby. And I think initially it, it, it is regarded as a hobby to many. I think for me also. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was a hobby um, and then you know after you like you say you connect with with, with teachers with, with a real teacher you just realize that um, you know there's something much deeper deeper to it and, and I love what you said about your teacher always looking at the good um, 
things about your work and not not pointing out what you did wrong and i think that's also so important for a student to be encouraged um you know in 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 this art because uh, it's really something difficult like you say um it's not not difficult but uh, but it could be challenging and many people uh, i think perhaps they don't they don't foresee themselves becoming a professional or a serious calligrapher like yourself but what advice would you give to people that that perhaps do not have the you know all the time in the world to to dedicate and they just want to to get a bit of that baraka how how would they um go forward and do and do this i think once they are into the calligraphy itself many people start off also as a hobby and then there is something which draws you into calligraphy and you fall in love with it and as time goes you take it very seriously and you want to be professional or be as good as other calligraphers so many people start off as a hobby but end up doing it very seriously so what i would say is they should just give it a try and see how it goes from there but like we said they need to get a teacher and they need patience and they have to be very hard working they could start off maybe slowly doing one day maybe one hour or two hours a day and with time inshallah they would progress and they would find themselves in the at the stage where they have to receive the ijaza so it's you have to take it step by step i think yes uh, there's a question from an anonymous attendee i think it's connected to what we just said now um how can south africans get training and guidance from a real master regarding arabic calligraphy and what does sheikh hobi think about using zoom and whatsapp as a means to connect with a master to get training that's that's the question would you like to 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 answer that maybe what do you think about using zoom and whatsapp as a means i think what i could do is maybe do it with a uh, email whereby they would be sending the lessons maybe once a week or once in two weeks i would correct them and send them back because by zoom i think it would be easier by email i haven't tried and i have i have not seen anybody doing it using zoom okay you we haven't tried it before we tried it before using email and they were sending lessons and i send it, i send it back to them so mm. that is a only way i feel comfortable with for now okay i think that uh, if anybody wants to be a student then i think they should take serious notes the <laughs> uh, email is the way to go with hafiz muhammad obi um, and we can see from there maybe um and somebody's asking uh does one have to know how to read the quran or be a hafiz student to be able to do calligraphy oh, sorry so this is the piece when it has been finished with the harakat mashallah and after writing it you know, there are some edges which still need to be cleaned up so now i'm going to be doing some tashhi something which is called tashhi that means like corrections or fixing the mistakes or sometimes the hand shakes so this is a kind of pen which i'm using it's a very fine nib so i will i will be going over the edges very slowly turning the paper when i need to sorry for the repeat i think okay and can you can you maybe just explain to the to our view, our audience uh what type of ink is it that you're using um is it some natural ink or traditional ink that uh, is preferred when you're doing these compositions there is iranian ink which is called uh there is japanese ink there is iranian ink and there is schminke i think which is from germany so those are types of inks we are using and just depends on from calligrapher to calligrapher which ink is better or which ink they prefer i see the iranian ink is called ismurakabi which we find in istanbul it's very cheap for 
beginners. You do you know what 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 it's made of? Is it like a suit? In I do not know. I think um, if I can just maybe add to the, to what you're doing here, um, this composition, um, and many people would probably wonder like what makes this a composition because it's a it looks like a straight uh, line of writing. Uh, I remember um, our our calligrapher here the, from 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 Turkey, Ustad Rafik Charikcha. He said to us one day that. Um, Becoming a calligrapher is also becoming a designer. So when you look at compositions, you are you are seeing the design in the composition and not just uh, a line of writing. So can you maybe explain to us like why or how you came up with this design and why you preferred it? Is, are there any elements that holds shape or something that's, that's holding this composition together? So the most important thing is to know the proportions. That is why it is very important to follow the syllabus, where you learn all the profit, the proportions of the letters, for example, how, how big a bar should be, what's the gap from here to there, and how many noctas. And then after that, the, it should be very balanced. It shouldn't be too loose or too tight, but it should, like, it should be breathing. Mm. So those are the most important. It's not about making shapes or making animal shapes or maybe circular shapes. It has to be balanced, well balanced, and it should uh, it should have some life and maybe it should be breathing or something like that. If you know what I mean. The, um, and and another, another question that I maybe have um, is that uh, when you do any composition, when you decide that you want to do this composition. Um, do you have any um, reason why you choose that specific um, verse or like this phrase, la ghaliba illallah, is there, is there any um, connection that you personally have to it, like spiritual connection or connection to the meaning? Or is it just that you like the phrase or how, what is your process in, in, in doing it? So many a time, somebody approaches me and say they would like a certain verse to be written for them in a certain way. So somebody will say they would like to have it in a circular shape. Somebody would like to have it in a straight line. So that is how my comp most of my compositions come to life. For example, this was, there is a client who wanted it to be written in this shape. Sometimes yes. maybe he would have said he wants it in a round shape. I would have to use my imagination and creativity. You no, know, it would take many days for me to to do the sketching and maybe to get it to the way which I want it to be. So sometimes maybe if you are reading a verse, or it has a very strong or powerful meaning, and maybe it. Uh, oh, some people have favorite verses. Some people. Just depends on from calligrapher to calligrapher. Okay, that's a lot. Yes. Um, so, so I'm just. This trying... is. This is a complete piece. So this is how it started. It was this size. And then when I was happy with the shape of it, I made it bigger, and I went through all those stages with pencil, and then we had to trace it over the. The photocopier to trace it over to this paper using a pencil. And then I wrote it with a bigger pen. So this is how we do our compositions most of the time. MashaAllah. Mm. I think yeah. uh, all, of, all of us watching, I'm, I'm saying MashaAllah for everybody's part because <laughs> I think we're all just like, we, our jaws are dropping watching your work and it's like, it's so easy for you to do. It looks so easy coming through your hands. Um, and I remember when you were here last year uh, for the Seas of Ink, one of the other calligraphers, uh, Sheikh Abdul Hamid, who we will be having next week, inshallah. So we'll also be having another another session like this for the next couple of weeks, for seven uh, for the next seven weeks, inshallah. We'll be having these sessions every Sunday evening. Um, and next week we'll have Sheikh Abdul Hamid, and he said, when I asked him to comment on your work, he said, he said, Yaduhu Qawi, your your hand is very strong. You have a strong hand. Um, do you think that over time? 
the more you write, your hand will just become uh, like you don't have to think much in writing a letter. It just just kind of like changing gears. Is do you think that could be a, a description of, of what happens? Uh, sorry. Sorry, did I get cut? The yes, no, I got you. So that is why my teacher was saying you need about when it's all about practice. You know, the more you practice, the stronger the hands get. So it's all about practice, nothing else. True, definitely. Um, I, there's, there's a saying that I love. It's, uh, it says, uh, I don't know, I, I saw it somewhere. Someone quoted it one day. It says, um, practice makes permanent. And ever since I've always been using that, no matter what I do, I've always been telling telling people, you know, practice makes permanent. So if you, and, and here's the thing about practice, um, in my opinion, you can also be practicing incorrectly. So especially if you don't have a teacher, you'll, you'll be practicing incorrectly and that becomes a uh, part of you, um, and you and you, you aren't aware of it. Um, so I think that's one of the dangers. There's another question here. It says, can Okaf South Africa please help start the cultural center where Arabic calligraphy can be taught traditionally by master teachers, please, rather than self-taught South Africans? Um, this is the reason why um, Okaf uh, South Africa and uh, Arabic calligraphers South Africa has partnered. Um, we, we, we are doing this work specifically for this reason to bring the, the master calligraphers uh, to South Africans and, and show, show, to show us the way. Um, I think this is, this is exactly what is being done. So shukran for that. And then there's another question. Um, I would like to know whether one is able to learn calligraphy in order to write Arabic neatly and beautifully, but not exactly for calligraphic purposes. Can you learn, are there instances where people learn calligraphy just to write neatly? Yeah, so most of the teachers, they start off with a script known as Rika. So Rika is a uh, handwriting, you no? Know, for people who want to write Arabic neat and maybe for university purposes, people always start off with that Rika script. So that is the, uh, if they don't want to become calligraphers or anything, they could maybe start off with that Rick R, which is also a very beautiful script. True. And it's used for handwriting mostly, for letters and things like that. Okay, shukran for that. Uh, there's uh, another question. Um, uh, the questions are just streaming in. So I'm trying to get through as much as I can. So people don't feel that the questions have not been answered. Um, I've been practicing, this person says, I've been practicing pieces for about eight, eight years. However, I'm not professional, but this is my passion. What would be the way forward to studying under professionals in Turkey and receiving ijazah? And how do we get there in contact with the right people? Mm. So... I think we have to make the effort maybe to get in touch with a qualified calligrapher. Because in Turkey, they are, not, they are not very strict about taking students. You just need to show the dedication and the interest and get in touch with a proper teacher or whichever teacher you desire to learn with. Finding a teacher is very easy, but the consistency is what is important. So that's the only way I can think of. They need to find a teacher and then show him that they are dedicated and they want to carry on with it. And they should not rush and think maybe they're going too slow or he's wasting their time. The time will come when they can, they will feel as if they're, the time will come for them to do compositions and to be proper calligraphers and stuff. But you need to give the time. Yes, Mr. Marshall, definitely time. Time and practice, time and effort. I think that goes together. And then also maybe they should try and come to come to Istanbul, maybe spend a month or three weeks. But if that's not possible to, like I said, some teachers, they teach over email or WhatsApp. But at some point, you have to come to Istanbul and see how the teacher is, is doing the work or how it's, how it's used. And you have to watch the hand. Yes, yes. 
So um, when I think when you were in Cape Town, um, many of the people that was in your class, they were commenting and uh, they were just in awe watching you, right? Because I think there was a certain way you you kind of click the pin at the end of certain letters. And I yes. think uh, a lot of people found that very intriguing and people were trying to do it. And when I went around to the desks, they were asking me how to do that. I said, you have to ask him because it takes so many years to, to just to just be able to, to, um, to twist your pin. It comes with, just practice, in the right way. with practice and also watching your teacher write. Because like I said, I used to do calligraphy for many years in South Africa but I didn't have the proper guidance. So that is why I wasn't going forward. You know, I just felt as if I was stuck. It's not impossible, but it's very important that we have a teacher. That's one of the first of fundamentals of becoming a calligrapher is to find a teacher. Yes, okay. So I think um, many people would probably, after this session, would want to, to find a teacher and connect with one. And uh, I have to say this, that uh, yourself, uh, Haf Muhammad Wubi, mashallah, you have been um, chosen or appointed as one of the mentors to Arabic calligraphers of South Africa, uh, to AXA. And uh, we will take your guidance in, as to how you would like to pursue, um, you know, taking on students and connecting with students here back in South Africa. And inshallah, hopefully one day, come again and uh, connect. Uh, you know, connect with, with the students here. Yeah. So um, I think that perhaps maybe after um, after the session, we can we can keep everybody informed by um, by email and let them know. Just gather the interest. Um, I think one last question. I think it's really important to ask this question. There were two two questions. Um, one says, uh, "Shukran so much for the session. How important is it to understand Arabic in becoming calligrapher? And what is your favorite Arabic calligraphy script and why?" Uh, could you repeat the last the, before that? How important uh, is it to understand Arabic in becoming a calligrapher? Most of us we don't speak Arabic, we don't understand Arabic. But of course, if you understand and know Arabic, it would be so much better because Arabic is such a rich language. There are so many phrases other than writing the Quran, so many poems which you could write. Mm. So you would be not limited if you knew the language. So it's very important to know the language. But it doesn't say that you have to speak Arabic to write uh, Islamic calligraphy. But other than that, my favorite script is writing Jelly Thuluth, where I write, make co no compositions. The Jelly Thuluth gives you that, uh, it allows you to play with the letters, make compositions, and most calligraphers like, uh, prefer Jelly Thuluth. Okay, so so we know. Okay, that's that's your favorite. And would you be teaching? Um, what? How? When students connect with you, uh, what script do you start them off with? I started with Nas, so I usually start my students also with Nas. With the Nas. Yes. Okay, okay that's and, brilliant. <clears throat> and the other thing that teachers always emphasize is that the student shouldn't be. For example, let's say I'm a teacher or you are a teacher, and then the student shouldn't be taking reference from other calligraphers or from YouTube or anything. You should trust your teacher and trust that he's teaching you the right way. Don't be looking at YouTube and say, no, but this calligrapher did it this way. Why am I doing it this way? And things like that. Is there something, um, uh, I think just last before we end off now, I think it's closing off time. Uh, but just lastly, is there something in Arabic calligraphy amongst the Arabic calligraphers? Um, you know, like in art, they will say you have an artistic license. So once you become a calligrapher, is there some form of artistic license that you that, that allows you to play uh, with the rules or maybe bend the rules, if you can if you can put it that way? So after you each after you you know all the forms or the proportions of the letters, that is when you are allowed to make compositions. Compositions give you that freedom to go, you know, to be creative, but at the same time, you have to stick by the rules. 
my teacher always says, first of all, you have to perfect the traditional way before going into the modern styles or any other. You have to know the letters very well. Perfect, make the traditional very perf the traditional form, the traditional way you have to know it very well before you can start maybe experimenting on other on other styles or designs and things like that. Yes. You first have to know the traditional Arabic very well. And that also could take about 50 years to perfect. It takes a very long, it's a long process. MashaAllah, Jazakallah Khair, uh, Brother Muhammad will be for your time. Hafid Muhammad will be, um, it's really been a pleasure. Um, we have run out of time now and we'd like to close uh, thanking everyone. Thank, uh, shukran to Brother Hassanain, the Uqa for assisting us with, uh, with running a program like this, which is really important. Um, and uh, shukran to Uncle um, Zainul uh, Kaji as well. And to all the attendees, um, I'd like to say shukran for being here. I believe there's, there are over 90 participants, alhamdulillah. So I uh, would like to thank everyone and uh, would also urge everyone to subscribe to the OCOF, uh, you know, social media channels uh, via Facebook, Instagram, uh, to, to also stay abreast on the, the next webinar. So like I say, the next one, inshallah, will be with the, with the calligrapher from Egypt. And he will be introducing us to, to some methodology of uh, the Egyptian um, school of calligraphy, inshallah. And uh, after the session, inshallah, we will email uh, all the attendees uh, the slides of the speakers um, as well as the video of the session, inshallah. Uh, so the video is rec being recorded. Um, and all attendees will also get a chance to rate the event uh, at the end of the session by filling out the, the event survey, inshallah. So we hope everyone will do that. Any closing remarks from, from yourself, Brother Muhammad? Jazakallah for organizing this and Jazakallah to Awqaf. I'm, I'm very honored and inshallah in future, we, I will do a much better job than how I did today. Don't worry, you, you, you did just fine. <laughs> brilliant. That was brilliant, mashallah. I, I think everybody really appreciated the, uh, you know, the, the, the practical side of things, how you explain and just dive right into, into showing us how, how things are done. So, so I think shukran, shukran very much for that. It's really appreciated. We're going to do more, inshallah. Uh, we will keep you in contact with you and uh, I'll send you all the details of the people that are interested in learning directly from you. And, and one uh, thing, so, sorry, my teacher is, they say calligraphy is the language of the hand. So that is why I don't speak much. I prefer writing than speaking. Uncle Zainul, have you got any closing remarks in, in conclusion? Yeah, okay. Jazakallah. Uh, 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 Hafiz Muhammad, I think that was a brilliant presentation and I don't think you should underestimate your vocal uh, capacity. Uh, your handwriting is superb, but your presentation was actually superb. And I think the introductory video uh, was, was really very telling as well about the situation here in South Africa and your particular background. I was particularly moved by, by your father embracing Islam, you know, without actually having had any interaction with anybody. And that was really a miracle by itself. And Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, that was really uh, touching to me uh, for a start. Um, the, and, and of course, uh, your, your experience, uh, you know, in, in terms of your writing, uh, through your schooling and through your uh, madrasa and the recognition that you got uh, from your ustads and, and the encouragement that you actually got uh, to, to further your writing abilities and your skills, I think that, uh, that was also uh, amazing. And I think that must have 
uh, done something to you and that must have given you further impetus in actually uh, going further to study and which you did actually. So, so that was also, I think, a very uh, important part of your life, alhamdulillah. And then, of course, going to Istanbul and having the best of the best of master teachers, Hassan Chalebi himself, I think that in itself is an amazing feat that you were really a student of one of the best, best, best masters of calligraphy. Alhamdulillah. So, so we are very, very, very proud uh, as South African Muslims that we have somebody like you, who, who is our first calligrapher official with Ijaza, that has studied under the master of masters, uh, and you are now here in South Africa. I mean, you are in Istanbul, but you are here as yes, well. Yes, uh, yes. You know, and, and I see, I see uh, in this present picture, I see Khalid Iran there, and that yes, reminds yes. me, that reminds me that Irsika runs an, uh, a calligraphy competition, and and we are part of, uh, uh, you know, we have a, a relationship with Irsika. Uh, in, in terms of their uh, uh, activities. And we hope that we will, we will engage uh, Khalid Iran and Irsika uh, to, to bring the calligraphy competition also to South Africa. And, and it will encourage uh, our participants and our attendees here in South Africa, those that are keen on calligraphy, even if we have maybe not the master calligraphies competition, but at least even a beginner's uh, uh, calligraphy competition. So at least it will it will give us. And with some of the courses that have been run here in South Africa, you know, with Brother Fahim and Brother Rafiq uh, I, I, in Johannesburg and Cape Town and in Durban, there have been really some good work that has been produced. And I'm sure that some of the attendees that are present here today they too have actually produced uh, wonderful work and it would be great for, for us to send you some of their work. So, so just as a cursory assessment of, of for what, the, what their potentials are and perhaps uh, they could be encouraged to become other Muhammad Hobes or Hassan Chalebis in South Africa, inshallah. inshallah. So I think uh, 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 Fahim has actually mentioned uh, what the what the way forward is going to be, and hopefully that uh, through Arabic calligraphers South Africa and Okaf South Africa, uh, we are very hopeful that uh, calligraphy will become uh, an art form that many many South Africans, uh, our brothers and sisters here, will will uh, imbibe and will accept and will will become masters and I. I spoke to you earlier about Nail, and, yes. and he was also attending here. And I know that he's been uh, he, 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 his parenthood uh, are South African, so so we treat him as both South African, American, and and uh, Turkish actually. So and and you two, uh, you know, uh, are part of the family. So uh, we hope that uh, the, uh, for him has mentioned that we will be able to connect our people with more teachers and inshallah uh, that will be a good step forward. Jazakallah khairan and thank you so much for being with us and for making that presentation again and thank you to all the participants that joined us. Thank you Fahim, thank you uh, Arabic calligraphers South Africa, thank you Hassanain and I see Mikhail is there but he hasn't said a word and Sister Madia and everybody else, Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. We would like to say Jazakallah to all of the attendees for the interaction, for the questions. And um, please join us for um, our next webinar, inshallah. And we'll hand over to Brother Fahim uh, for the closing dua and the closing remarks. Um, I think um, the closing remarks was uh, well, well said by. Uh, Uncle Zainul. So, inshallah, we'll just uh, conclude with the dua, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen, Sayyidina wa Nabiyina wa Habibina wa Shafi'ina 
wa sanadina wa qurrata a'yunina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi yassir wa la tu'assir Rabbi tammin bil khair wa anta al-kareem al-muyassir Rabbana zidna ilma warzuqna fahma wa la tanfusna ya akram al-akramin And we'll all end up uh, reciting Surah Al-Asr insha'Allah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa al-Asr inna al-Insana lafi khus إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه بارك وسلم وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Barakallahu feek, jazakallahu khairan, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I can't hug you, but I can hug you just virtually as well. Alaikum okay. salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu. Jazakallahu.